Welcome to part two of the staff hiring, training, and evaluation course of the nonprofit bootcamp e-learning series. Many small organizations face turnover of staff, find it hard to manage staff well, and are under-resourced in both time and money. Leaders who are able to write outcomes-based job descriptions, design simple and structured training, and conduct fair and effective evaluations can manage more smoothly. During each webinar, participants will hear key concepts and then develop a specific plan for one high-need role in their organization. This is part two, simple and structured training. A new person who is greeted with a well-thought-out training program feels valued. The company or organization sends a message that we know what we're doing. Time is not wasted. Training topics are covered clearly, succinctly, and in the correct sequence. We will explore two examples of training programs that are simple and effective and get new, work and get new workers to hit the ground running in the right direction. Today's presenter is Peggy De Silva, Principal of Consulting for a Community. Peggy will be leading the HR staff training, hiring training and evaluation course and brings 30 plus years of experience helping businesses, nonprofits and public agencies to develop staff development and training systems. From seven years creating a full training program at Veritable Vegetable through season long warehouse training design at mid-sized food hubs to many quick diagnosis and fix it performance evaluation projects with smaller organizations, she has seen a lot. She knows how essential, thoughtful, and cleanly implemented HR systems are to food-focused organizations' success. Peggy, thanks again for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Please take it away. Thank you, Andrew. It's wonderful to be here with you all from Wallace Center and from people around the country in our network. I'm glad to be able to do the second part of the webinar series. Last time we looked at outcomes, and this time we're looking at, hmm, my slides aren't going, Annalena. Oh, there we go, okay. Oh yeah, okay, thank you so much. Um, last time we looked at outcomes, this time we're looking at training, and the th uh, third of our webinars next week, we'll be looking at evaluation. And I did talk last time, and anybody who's been participating in trainings with me in the past knows that I have a five-step pattern, pathway, for developing comprehensive training systems within organizations. Um, these are three of the steps. We aren't going into detail in competencies which come after outcomes, but I might be able to do some of that with you on the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, and we're not going to go into too much detail on application within your organizations, which goes between training and evaluation. But again, we can talk about that at other times. Right now, we're looking at uh, simple and structured training. And what I would like to uh, look at today with you is three things. One, why should we spend the time, the resources, the money, the energy in doing structured training? Lots and lots of organizations don't do that. Um, their training is kind of seat of the pants or, or the thing that people say, I just want people to come in and hit the ground running. Okay, so why should we spend some more time on it? We want to review the foundation for training, which is the outcomes. Some of you were with us last week and some of you were not, so we'll do just a really brief uh, review of that. And then I'd like to share with you two samples from two different food organizations of a training program and a training plan. Uh, one is for an individual driver and one is for a group of volunteers working for farmers markets. So we did outcomes last time. We did job announcements and job descriptions and hopefully you all that were here um, had some chance to practice with those and work on getting those nice and clear for any staff that you might be hiring or working toward evaluate, evaluating. And so now we're ready to go on into training. We're gonna do a really brief little review uh, of some of the things that we did with some fun questions. And Andrew, can you launch number one? Okay, so we've launched the first poll. Where is Peggy pictured in the previous slide? Behind the Wallace Center office in Arkansas, on a sheep farm in New Zealand, or near Hadrian's Wall in Northumberland? So we'll give you just a few seconds to answer here. If you're watching the recording of this, please play along and um, write down your answer. Just a few more seconds. Okay, so we're gonna close the poll and here's the results. 
Peggy, how did they do? Uh, they, they did very, very well. I think it's entertaining that it could be the behind the Wallace Center office in Arkansas. You, you all should go out and look for that wall. On a sheep farm in New Zealand is a very good guess because there were a whole lot of sheep around there. But where it really is is near Hadrian's Wall in Northumberland, which was in 128 D constructed to delineate the end of the Holy Roman Empire in the north and keep out those barbarians, the Picts and the Celts. So that's where we are. And I think the idea of this foundation, this wall that's going off into the north um, is kind of a good image for us in building our training. We need the foundation of out outcomes and we're carrying on. All right, let's get the next question. Okay, if you could advance the slide. Advance the slide, okay. There we go. Okay, so the second poll, outcomes are broad benefits that are reaped by an organization or community when function is, is done well. Um, is this true or false? Outcomes are reaped by a community or organization when a function is done well. Okay, we're getting the hang of this, so I'm gonna close the poll. Oh, good, so good, so good. Yes, um, for those who were with us last, last week, you would know that, that that's the definition of an outcome. An outcome is a statement, a statement of, if I'm stating it, broad benefits that are reaped by an organization or a community when a function's done well. And we talked about different functions. So for example, if you happen to be a food hub, your main functions are probably going to be purchasing, warehousing, driving, selling, uh, those are your main, main functions that do your work. And if those are all done very, very well, there are benefits to your organization. It's efficient, it makes money, it does its work well, and benefits to the community because the community gets more, better food. So, excellent. And for those who, who, who said false, we might ask you why you thought that was false at some point, but we'll come back to that. All right, the third one. You give us the question, right, Andrew? How is an outcome different from a task? Again, this is from last week. Okay, sorry, I was muted here. The choices are an outcome is aspirational and describes benefit. Tasks are optional and tasks are what people do in order to achieve outcomes. And we'll select all that apply. apply. Yeah. yeah, select all that apply. Again, if you're, if you're watching the recording, please write down your results, your guesses. Okay, just a few more seconds here. It's taking a little bit longer. Just check check the ones you think and Peggy will let us know. Okay, we're gonna close polling. And see how we did. Great. Yes, you are um, all right. Uh, tasks are what people do in order to achieve outcomes. Virtually everybody said that's that's the truth and it is the truth. So when you state your outcomes for your function, then you're gonna start writing tasks or procedures for your people. So that's what they do. This may have been a little bit confusing because you could have done multiple answers. And it is true also that an outcome is aspirational. It describes a benefit, like we said before. Um, so it's not a task. And so sometimes people try to write outcomes that say, the drivers will do such and such. And that's not an outcome statement. The outcome statement is, this is the benefit that's coming from it. A fine point, but it does work out in the end to make sense. Okay, one more, Andrew. Okay, so our final poll here. Training is based on outcomes and tasks. Can training be fun? This is an yes, opinion. So. Tell us what you think. And we discussed this in part one, I think. Um, oh, no, we're discussing it today. I don't want to give yeah. anything away. <laughs> yes, we are today. Okay, so we're gonna close this one and see if training can be fun. Oh, it's a pretty fun group here. This is definitely an opinion, and I have an opinion on it, and I'll go through um, this uh, presentation, and you'll, you'll see if you still think it's fun or not. But good to know what y'all are thinking. 
Great. Thank you so much, Andrew, for doing that. That was, that was, I thought that was fun. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So as I said, the first thing that we want to talk about um, is why spending all this time and resources and training and doing it in a way that requires planning. One of the things that's a little difficult about doing really good training, and it's sort of like prevention work in public health, is that if you train really well and people do their work really well, often errors don't happen, bad things don't happen, catastrophes we were talking about a little earlier. And sometimes that's not noticed. It's sort of like prevention in public health. If people eat really well and feel really good, you don't notice that as well, as much as when they maybe don't eat well and feel really bad. So it's hard sometimes to pin down a benefit. But these are some of the ones that I've certainly found um, that are important. Um, the first one, we talked last time also about this idea of in our work, we try to build equity among staff people. We try to bring on board people who may not have had lots of opportunities. So either for good work that's really well respected and supported, they may not have had a lot of formal education that would help them do the work more easily. So we want to put training in so that people feel that the work that they're doing is valued. Um, when you have good training, um, an organization looks like it knows what it's doing. Because if you have somebody coming on right at the beginning, your very first days on the job, you're offered something that's organized and put together. And so you say, okay, these people know what they're doing. Um, and as you go forward, like in professional development, that's one of the things that's of great value to people is to know that in their work, they can develop um, and that the folks that are their supervisors and managers care that they learn more and can do more with their work. Okay. Um, you're sure that all the essential topics in training, like an example I can give is if you just have somebody come and sit down next to somebody and watch what that person's doing. So you have your new person, you have an experienced person. There can be things that will happen that you want the person, the trainee, to learn and be able to do, but it might not come up in that first day that she's sitting next to the person who's experienced or walking around the warehouse with the person who's experienced. So if you really think through your training, you can make sure that you set up, if not the actual situation, something that's similar to it so that you can cover that and the person will be prepared. Whereas if you're not organized, it's easy to miss it, okay? Another thing is the time efficiency. You don't have to stand around waiting. Suppose there's a specific type of truck that needs to be unloaded in a specific way, and it only comes in once a week. You don't have to wait for it to happen and then run out and see how it's done. You can plan for either setting it up to see what it's like or planning that into your training program so that you can see that particular truck and that particular unloading procedure, you know, when it happens, okay? And then the final thing that I was just talking to another organization yesterday about was when they've got some people who are failing, um, not doing so well in work and trying to figure out, okay, what, what are the reasons why this isn't working? And what I like to say is there are all sorts of reasons why people have problems at work and why they might fail. And I'd like to say that it's never bad training because you have control over the training that you offer to people. You don't have a control over a lot of other things. So control the stuff that you can, make sure that the answer to why the person isn't doing good work is not, oh, we forgot to train them in that, okay? And here's an example of what you don't wanna do. This is actually a staff person from an organization that I worked with and then she went somewhere else um, and she sent back this note to her supervisor about you know, what it was like at the new place. And the final sentence there, on my first day here, I sat at my desk staring to space, goes right in line with this next final sentence. If you want to lower your firm's labor productivity, that's a perfect way to do it. This is one of my current favorite books, The Good Job Strategy. I've shown it to some people at the conference. Um, we talked about it, the Food, Hub, uh, or Food Network Conference. Zainab Tom, Tan is a professor of business in the business school at MIT. And she is really interested in 
the support of people who are in what she calls now bad jobs. She focuses on retail, on big retail, um, but but the work, some of the work that we're doing with people, drivers, warehouse workers, um, some of the some of the sales work, some of the things that you get people in who they have jobs that are not high paid, they're not well trained, they don't have a lot of control over their schedule. And what she's saying is companies can do well by also offering good jobs to their staff people. And one of the key things, it's not the only thing at all, um, training is not the only thing that she recommends, but she definitely emphasizes that a lot, um, that if you are organized and if you have good training, you're going to have higher productivity also. So it's a win-win. A okay, so that's what we want training not to be, those last two. What we do want it to be is organized, of course. I mean, I will emphasize over and over and over again with people till they're crazy with me, you got to organize it. Um, if I'm ever working with somebody in training and they say, we're just going to wing it, it likes makes my blood boil. Or, you know, I get very bad and I need a lot of chocolate because it's just not a good thing. You got to organize your training. You have to have specific objectives of what you want the people participating in it to be doing during the course of the training. We talked a little bit about time efficiency and then engaging for adult learners. So thinking about training adults, which is what we're working with, um, adults are different than small children. They come with some knowledge and experience. They need to make choices. They have a little bit more of a fear of failing than small children. So there's some things about ways to engage them in the learning that will make them happier and also will make them do better work and remember what you taught them better. Okay, so these are some of the examples of that. And then, of course, my question that I brought before. So this is my opinion. Yes, training can be fun. And you all are getting the benefit of me having just gotten some new pictures from my vacation at the end of last year. Um, and this is having fun in learning about a new place, which was Lisbon. To look a little bit more at these specifics, and I'd like you to bear these in mind when we look at the particularly the training plan, which is the very last thing that we'll be looking at today um, from Farm Fresh Rhode Island, the ways that when you develop creative and respectful and engaging and effective training, how you put all these things in place. When you say respecting the learners as decision makers, this can get a little dicey with some CEOs or people who say, or managers who say, just tell them what they need to do. You know, I need them just to know and do it that way. But with adults, you want to respect that they make decisions. Definitely, you've got a procedure. And if you've lined it up really well, you've got it clear. You can train that. But you want them also to be able to think creatively. We're not trying to train robots, OK? At least I'm not. That's not very interesting. Safe means not just falling off of, the, off of the dock or something like that. Safe means also psychological safety. So you don't want to ever make people feel bad. Um, one of the worst things I heard when I was doing a needs assessment for a new training system in one company was that one of the people who'd been trained the year before said, well, yes, they really didn't tell me what to do. And then they spoke to me really harshly when I did it wrong. And that's just not a good way to have anybody learning or working in an organization. Um, Relevant and immediately useful is really, really key for adults because we don't want to sit around and waste time. We want to get to know what we need to know. Most people don't want to be sitting around like, quote unquote, in training for weeks before they get to do their work. So we want to integrate them into the work as quickly as possible. Definitely a sequence, simpler things, more complex things. Using open questions is a really important way to learn what people already know and build upon that. Um, I think it's such a loss if you have a trainee or a group of trainees and you never find out what their background is so that you don't know, for example, if you're training them to drive a forklift, if they've ever driven a forklift before. Um, so they will bring in experiences and you need to train based on those experiences. Sometimes you wanna know those experiences so you can train differently because what they learned was not how you want them to do it. Ideas, feelings, and actions, particularly when we're in something in a mission-driven organization or we're 
with um, like we are a very values based kind of a food system reform group. Um, we do want to think about what people feel. You don't want to just ask, give them a bunch of facts about local food um, or sustainably raised or organic food. You want to talk about, you know, how does it feel to you about having this food available to my community? Okay. Oh, one thing back here too. Um, at the bottom here, you'll see this um, little logo, Global Learning Partners. There's a couple of organizations that I think are really, really valuable as far as resources in doing adult learning, doing training. Global Learning Partners was started by Dr. Jane Vela, who I think is one of the most impressive adult education gurus, if I would say, in the world. Um, and has many, many good ideas, has worked with lots of different kinds of organizations all over the world. Um, started this organization and they do trainings, they have publications, they have all sorts of resources for you in terms of adult learning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. And then this one is to say again, just sitting down and telling people that's not training. Um, and I was, <laughs> I feel a little odd doing a 30 minute lecture here because that's not usually how I like to train, but we're going to get to the office hours and that will be good. So just to remember that if you just tell people that isn't how they will necessarily learn. Um, this little book is funny. Um, it's fun to read. It's put out by the Association for Talent Development, which used to be the American Society for Training and Development. And they are very, very corporate. So they're big corporate training kind of philosophies. And so you got to kind of take that with a grain of salt. But, but they're definitely useful to know about. Okay, so now to the effective and engaging training, um, the samples that I'd like us to look at, and we can look at them some more maybe in, in office hours too, are from Common Market Philadelphia, a training program, um, as a program of over many days, how they were gonna train a new driver. And then Farm Fresh Rhode Island, I have one specific training plan that's a lot of detail um, that gives a specific hour and a half, I think it is long training that has objectives and all those other kinds of good things so that they could train their volunteers. And for each of these, you'll see that the outcomes have already been written. They have already worked on tasks and competencies that are either written or in process um, for this particular outcome. Um, they have schedules and timings, so they're very organized as to how much time this will take. They have identified the trainers that are going to be doing it. Okay. So this is the driver. Um, just to kind of go back again and look at, we have um, the function is trucking. This is a driver job. You saw this outcome last week. Every customer and vendor receives courteous service that facilitates their business operations. Then they're working on sample tasks. Um, and then they're going to train based on that. So they will have all of their outcomes. I think maybe they had four or five for trucking. Um, and, and then some sample tasks or examples of what needed to be done that they could train people on as they went forward. Okay. And my apologies that this is hard to see. I couldn't make it bigger, but you can see that as a training schedule, as a program, it's got, it's a snip from it. It was, so there were four days listed here. I can't tell you how often I've heard from people that, you know, a trainee comes in and gets handed something like this. And that person, it's, it's a real sense of security. Like I said before, the staff person feels valued. The staff person feels like the organization knows what it's doing. Because here I am coming to work, and this happens to be for somebody who's new. Here I am coming to work. I've got a schedule for the week. I know what time I'm coming. I know what I'm doing at different times. So the people I'm coming to work with have thought about me. They've brought this forward to do you know, the work that we need to do together. There's little things that are highlighted in blue. So the dates. So this one has four days and it's showing that Wednesday's a day off You know, because lots of our work is not just Monday through Friday. The driver's going to be working on, I think, Saturday in this week. And then you'll see that at the top on the left, there's a core to food safety. So one of the training um, plans that's written is all about food safety. So that's going to be worked with with the driver. Um, the trainer is listed, Tatiana. 
and it's got an hour, 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning. That's what they're going to start with. On the next day, on Tuesday, you can see it starts much earlier, is going, has a, has a specific piece of training about starting up the truck and, you know, all the things the driver needs to get started in the, in the, in the beginning of the day. And that is listed as D1. So that's their first piece of driver training. And then I mentioned a little while ago, this shadowing. And it's not that I don't think shadowing is good. In this case, shadowing is a very good thing to do to go out on a run with the driver and see what's being done. But you'll see there that there's a new driver observation checklist. And that's really helpful because the driver has is not just floating around looking at things, but actually has something to do. And, and you're priming him for what you'd like him to see as he goes forward, okay? Here's healthy foods, healthy families, outcomes. These are the outcomes they wrote. This is a specific community access project in Farm Press, Rhode Island. So these are the three outcomes for this function or project. Families understand it. Documentation is good. People are getting engaging education, changing knowledge and eating. So this is what those are all stated as benefits that accrue to families and the organization, people out there, if this is done well. Okay. And again, there's a download. It's off to the right-hand side of your screen where it says HFL 1A Icebreaker and Outcomes because that's the actual full training plan for this. And we'll, we can talk about that a little bit more. But this was specifically written for everybody who worked on that program in one year. This was the, you know, this was the 2017, for example, year of farmers markets. Everybody came together for a piece of training. They actually covered part of all three of their outcomes in that training and then went on to then train other people in what they needed to learn. They have a very complicated system because they've got staff people and volunteers of different levels working in the program. But again, um, I didn't give you all the detail that's in the handout there, but they've got an outcome listed. They've got a title for the training. They've got the time of it. A rationale statement is just kind of a little thing of, for all of us, why is it that we would want to train them on this? What are your objectives? Okay. And the training objectives specifically for this one are that trainees will, one, introduce themselves to each other by sharing experiences, attitudes, and knowledge. Two, learn some interesting things about food farms and food access in Rhode Island. And three, be introduced to the three main outcomes we hope will be achieved by the work of Healthy Foods, Healthy Families. So that's what they're working on in this specific training. Um, and it goes for time, 30 to, 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the size of the group, okay? Then you're going to want to have preparation notes, particularly if you have different people doing training at different times. Having this written out, having the notes there is going to be really, really helpful for consistency and also saving the time of your trainers. Um, and then you want to list, of course, what training materials you need. Do you need flip charts? Do you need specific pieces of equipment in the warehouse, to whatever you need in order to carry out that training. So you're not spending the first part of your time running around and gathering it, okay? And that's what the handout is over there off to the right. And that's enough talking from me for today. Um, next, we find out this picture is, is it all worth it? We do evaluation. And we will look next week at evaluating both the staff person based on skills, knowledge, attitudes that are demonstrated, and evaluating our training also to make sure that it did what we wanted it to do.